Hey, and a very warm welcome to the Into the Light Web podcast with me, your hostess, Joanna Hunter, metaphysical teacher, spiritual life and business coach, published author, and the high priestess of the Light Web, a spiritual technology that will change your life. This is the place to be to talk everything under the Light Web from consciousness, relationships, to money, to spiritual business, and everything in between. Hi, it's Joanna Hunter here from joannahunter.com and you are watching an Into the Light Web podcast episode. And today I am joined by the gorgeous Elena. Elena, come and introduce yourself and tell people what it is that you do in the world. Hi, Joanna and everyone. Um, so I'm Elena and I'm an energy healer and I'm a lightweight priestess as well. And I work with um, I work with the Akashic Records and past life regression mostly, and um, I'm teaching the Light Web principles, which means that trying to help people um, being more aligned aligned um, to source and themselves, and um, that's what I do through. Uh, through healing sessions mainly and coaching as well amazing amazing so tell us a little bit about your journey into self-development let's go like right back through the sounds Mm. of time into (laughs) self-development and uh, how did you get into self-development well it's um it's a long story it started in my 20s I think in my early 20s um so about 20 years ago, I started, um, I wanted to have my own business already at the time. I didn't know uh, what to do, but I knew that I wanted to have my own business, to have, to be self-employed. And I was really well guided at the time. I wasn't really in touch with my spiritual side, but I was, I know that my guides like we're working very very well and uh, a friend um, started a a reflexology training and she invited me to participate in um, the same in the same uh, training and I said oh why not I'll try I didn't know anything about reflexology so um, I started and I thought oh that's a good thing to be your own you your own uh, to have your own business to have to work with um, um, holistic alternative medicines and I really loved it um, as a, I mean I used those those medicines as well for myself already but I really I thought I didn't know I was able to do that so I started and I thought okay this, this is not so mm-hmm. difficult and I I started to be surrounded by all these spiritual people through this, you know, because many of them. We love those friends that rule us in, don't we? We love those friends that like say, come and try this. (laughs) And um, yeah, it was really, so that's when I started working with energy. I had knowledge of Uh, Chinese medicine and massage and aromatherapy Um, so it was really hands-on healing you know with you needed to be in person working uh, on bodies touching touching the bodies and to be honest I got a little bit fed up with touching bodies and I really wanted to have a more um, conversational healing you know and um so, but I really enjoyed the, those years, and um, I still had. Let's go love. back to that bit where you said you were getting fed up with touching bodies, because yeah. I I felt very much something similar when I was doing like I was doing readings. I wasn't quite sort of massage or just touching bodies and things like that. But there comes this point, doesn't it, where you start to realize that. Like when I was doing the readings, it felt like they were like band-aids on bigger problems, you know, like problems that really needed to be talked through, problems that really needed a different type of care, a more 
well, now I know, today I know, and you know that it's source connection. But back then it was like, this this is, isn't enough just to give this person a reading. And for you, you were obviously coming to a point where you were realizing, you know, the reflexology, the aromatherapy, the Chinese medicine, all of these things are nice, but some people are coming back, you know, month after month, still same problem because there's a deeper issue. Absolutely. And with some people, it worked very well because they were open to a conversation during, you know, the hands-on healing. I was, I was, we were having a conversation anyway. Um, and some of them were really, for them, it was really helpful to come and mm -hmm. they had um, a lot of improvement in their um, thinking of one uh, client she had um, she had a lot of improvement in her mental health actually and I know it's I mean of course the reflexology was working on her mental health as, as well but um, I think our conversations were really empowering her really even something. though I was I was young, I was a little chicken nugget, as you say, <laughs> and uh, I needed that too, you know, of course, I was not really in touch with my full spirituality at the time, but I was, that's when I say I was guided, you know, I I just did it naturally, yeah, and yeah. Um, mm, yeah. So tell us when you started to have that realization of needing to kind of broaden what you did yeah. it wasn't I think a lot of people get into the spiritual business side of things um, and they're looking for something physical to do you know like Reiki for instance is a classic example uh, hands you know a um, massage these sort of things we really truly already feel that calling to help mm -hmm. um, and so we we enter into that world and we often look for something physical that we can do what mm -hmm. can I do to create that help for someone but then I think what takes over is spirit starts guiding us and we start to realize that there's this whole other element um, of the mind and the mindset and the energy and the energetics underneath everything like why do these people have these chronic problems again why did I have you know my chronic problems um and things like that and you start to realize that it has a lot to do with our our thinking was that the same case for you to think that way as well yes yes I had um several years later i had um a few agents of the universe coming and people but coming in the form of people um really like i had this it was about 10 years ago so i felt um really rock bottom um in my own being in my own mental health and i was really like wanting to find what is my purpose, you know, what uh, what am I here to do? I, it can't be, um, is that all there is about life? You know, there, there must be something else. I, I mean, my relationships are crap. My, um, I'm not really happy in life. I don't know what to do um, as a job. I don't know how to serve. And, and I was losing my friends, <laughs> so my, the friends I had at the time at the same time I was really guided to have children so I decided um I was really pushed like it was really um I think a uh, spiritually guided decision because I was not really into children but <laughs> I didn't know many and um and I was really really um pushed to to have uh, to have my own children, and I decided to have them on my own because it wasn't working with anyone. So I um, ended up having my children uh, by myself. Uh, so through um, uh, a donor, so through a clinic in a in a foreign country. So I had to travel because it was not allowed in my country, and 
so this was already taking me a lot of energy and time, you know, so I didn't really, at that time, I was not doing any therapies and anything, but it was a big self-development journey, uh, obviously, to become a parent, um, to try to be a parent because it didn't work uh, immediately. And it was a long journey. And um, <clears throat> I think this is, I, I want to mm. just back up a little minute, because I love this part of your story that, you know, you felt this real drive to have children. Um, and you know, and I just want to honor like how brave and courageous it was to decide I'm going to do that on my own. I'm going to do that, you know, something that I really, really mm -hmm. want. I feel like that to me, I mean, I, I just, I get emotional feeling about it because I just feel like it's such a profound act of self-love. I think a lot of people might want to be a parent, but the fear of doing it alone, the fear of doing it. And, and in that moment, I really felt like you made a decision where fear wasn't running the show. You know, you made that yeah. decision mm -hmm. from a place of love and profound self-love of this is something I truly desire and want for myself. So this is something I'm going to give to myself and give myself the gift of, of being a parent. And I think, you know, that, is it's not the conventional way right that you went about that but I think it's still it's and that's what makes it so brave that's what makes it so extraordinary yes and I remember um I I had a lot of fears it took me time for the first one and I guess it's because you know there was still fear and um and really um I remember saying to myself, I'm ready to leave this adventure. I took it as an adventure. I was a very adventurous young woman. I mm -hmm. loved traveling. I did all the things. And really, <laughs> uh, I was I was like, come on, it's I know it's not going to be easy. Everyone was telling me, oh, this is so hard. Yes, this is so hard. <laughs> but um, I was really um, ready to for it to be a, like an adventure. And so it was, for me, it was, I think, what, um, what clicked really is taking it, okay, it's, there's, it's gonna be messy sometimes, but it's the adventure. And uh, that's what I try to remember, to remind myself when um, it doesn't go right, um, that I'm on an adventure and uh, it's, my, it's a big achievement. So when I want to achieve something, um, I think about that because, you know, it's the thing I managed to achieve. So I try to go back and think about um, what I what I did exactly at the time uh, to to really uh, align really myself good. to this goal, really. I love that because yeah. success leaves clues mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter like where you're successful, you know, like it transfers into everything. Success leaves clues. So if we were successful in accomplishing this goal of having children, those clues will help us to create a successful business or create successful relationships because success leaves clues um every time we achieve it leaves clues and I love that I love that you cast your mind back and think okay what were the steps that I took what was the journey what did it look like beautiful yes and then I started to to have more intuition as well and to follow my intuition and of course, in the beginning, I was delegating my intuition, which means I, I was really loving to, um, to have readings for myself. And, you know, like um, I had a tarot reader, I had a... <laughs> um, <laughs> I, everyone. Uh, I'm old lady in the forest that could read bones. <laughs> yeah, I went, I went to an Akashic Records reader and we have talked about this in, in your certification. It was just, I mean, it was amazing, but it was a reading and I was not there. 
So uh, this is not the way we do. Um, when when we do the Akashic Records uh, sessions, we, we guide people um, so they can experience, have experience. they can have their own, uh, even if they don't see everything, they can have their, the journey for themselves. And I would have loved to be on that journey because it was really interesting. It was a great reading. And it started to... Um, to for example this woman she was very psychic and she started and when I entered the room she started casually saying oh oh are you close to Jesus you have this energy around you you have the Christ energy around you and I was Jesus but that's for religious people and and you know I was <laughs> I was not really um aware at the time for me Jesus was religion and it was not an energy and it was not I didn't know about um, ascended masters and everything but she knew and she was like oh yeah yeah you have that around you and um, and then she went on in the reading telling me about past lives um, in uh, doing the same kind of healing that he did um, with at the same I, I think the it's called the Essenes um, or Essenians, I don't know, the, the people working with Jesus. And um, I just, oh, you had past lives with them. And now, oh, and, and you were doing the same kind of healing. And, and, and of course, I was completely mind blown because I was not expecting that. Um, I was expecting all the witch wound things, but not, not that. And it was really when it started, uh, when I started having a different relationship with, um, with understanding religion as well, um, understanding the like the, the true story, what um, around these energy around Jesus, uh, Mary, Mary Magdalene energies, and the ascended masters, and. It was when I worked with you that I learned a little bit more really about, uh, about them, about those energies. And um, yeah, and then I started trusting a little bit more in my intuition, my own intuition. When people told me, but you have your own intuition, you, you, are, you, are, um, you have those gifts in you, I can see them in you, energy, and when many people started telling me this i remember a medium uh, working with past lives she was amazing too uh she told me because i went oh i don't know what to do and and she she in the end of the session she was like i think you're going to do something similar than what i do <laughs> and and um uh, it was in 2018 and it was the same, it was this time of the year, September, October, November. And um, it was when I was light web activated. I think I had the light web activation just, um, just before um, this, this session with this woman. And it was when really it started opening me up to um, the fact that I could do it too. And I was doing, at the time I was training in RTT, which is the rapid transformational therapy, but it's about regressive hypnotherapy. So you work, you regress to mostly childhood. So you work a lot on the inner child and the generational wounds, the parents, and but my clients started to to go to past life even the muggles you know even the people who don't <laughs> even the don't believe in, in past lives <laughs> like they were like ah, where i am i mean i'm in the stars i'm in the universe what's that shit <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> and oh my and God. when i started having people going back to past lives and and i was okay, I'm going to maybe to train myself a little bit more in this area, you know, and I'll just ask them to go back to the root, but they went back to the root, <laughs> to, to not in this life. And um, yeah, it was amazing, uh, really an amazing journey. 
um, of discovery and and but really what helped in my in trusting really trusting my intuition and starting to be able to see feel things for others as well and read other people's energy um it was really after well the priestess training did a lot and the akashic records uh certification was yeah. really opening me up Let's talk about your light web journey. When you first entered light web, did you have any idea what you were getting into or? No. I, I probably didn't have any I... idea what I was teaching either at that point, to be honest, because <laughs> it was like, I was just like, I've got this thing. It was just in the beginning. I, I had, I was, um, we were friends on Facebook already, but I wasn't really following you. And I think it's when you started, when you, you posted a picture of this light on the ceiling that your client had um, just after a light web activation and, um, or I don't remember, or healing, she, you, you posted this picture and it really called me. I was like, what the fuck is that? And I could see this, this, um, this web, this web of light. Um, like a remembrance. And and then you were talking about the numbers and the repeating numbers. And obviously I was, comp during that summer, I was uh, summer of 2018. So it all happened at the same time. Uh, the the um, My RTT training happened at the same time and everything. Um, really, four years ago, um, I remember you were talking about repeating numbers and I could see them everywhere. They were really stalking me mm -hmm. for the whole summer. I, I, I was like, am I, am, I, am I losing my mind? Seriously, I'm seeing those. Every time I was watching the clock, it was 11.11, 11, it was 3.33, it was. And, and really, I looked into, oh, I Googled, you know, what is it? Angel numbers, <laughs> okay. And um, and then I started seeing your posts about, about these numbers and about the light web. And I think I joined the round of October um, 2018. And, um, and I really didn't know what it was about, really. Uh, I... And, and I, I think it really started to sink in after a few rounds, you know, I had a little bit in the first one and then it went deeper and deeper. And then I wanted, I was really feeling called to do the priestess training. Um, <clears throat> and I think it, Lightweb really <laughs> helped me a lot um, to go through what was expecting me in a year in those years and uh, to see um, see it from a higher perspective and really um, yeah really maintaining a higher um, consciousness through um, has it helped you just life. navigate daily life a lot yes. easier yeah and um you know and like do you find like I find myself like from my own personal experience I'm like so much more chill now than I was like things has to get up really 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 early in the morning to kind of take a bite out of me now whereas back in the day people could put like it was it was shocking at how often I gave my power away because people could push my buttons the e it was the easiest thing in the world to do I mean just look at me funny and I would have been like ah. um and you know now I'm like really chill and I feel a lot of that's just really light web and the tools there and just I'm like yeah like I can feel I can feel that feeling inside that like maybe I should be bothered about that but then it's like it's like that part of me can't be bothered to get up to rise to it and just says you know what just let let that just be because that's I, I don't need that in my life and to be able to move and it just makes life so much easier and simpler um that's, so yeah. mm. tell us a lot because you between so we did the light web healing then we did the light web priestess 
And you did Akashic Records with us as well. Yeah. Um, but between your Light Web Priestess and your Akashic Records, you went on, you had Agent Illness show up. And yeah. So well, first we had, uh, we all experienced Agent Lockdown. <laughs> Agent Lockdown, <laughs> Agent, yes. Yeah. Agent C. Um, and this was during the, like, the Priestess training, if I remember mm. well. Um, so really, it helped me a lot uh, to have that support, to have your help, because when I was, I, I wasn't really scared about the virus. I was, um, I was really scared of being home alone with my children, <laughs> to be honest. So I, I, of course, I love them. I wanted them so much. I, I made them <laughs> myself, but really, um, I'm not a woman uh, that can stay uh, with, their, with her children 24 seven. I need my own, uh, I need to be in my own energy. Um, I need to do my own things. And really it drains me to be all the time with other people, whether it's my children or anyone else. Um, and um, obviously there were, um, I had a lot of, um, uh, we all had a lot of emotional uh, issues during that time because the school were closed and the children didn't really get it. And um, um, yeah, I felt well, ages I felt really just at the me, beginning of lockdown. Yeah, I remembered that I was in a maternal exhaustion and I had been for uh, about two, three years even. Um, but I didn't realize it. It was so insidious when uh, in the first few years that I really, I, I wasn't seeing it and, but I was exhausted and mm -hmm. I was doing everything on my own. Um, my children were not good sleepers. So I was really um, in a deep- uh, What ages sleep were they, Elena? Mm -hmm. What ages were your kids when at the beginning of the lockdown? So the well, the fact that I felt all these feelings again because of being, you know, being together for um, all that time, it was in the first three weeks that it was very difficult, and then I I felt better thanks to Lightweb. <laughs> I I really started to feel better, but I realized like it came down on me that really oh i i am i i i am in maternal depression or exhaustion i didn't know what how to how to call it really and um so after that when school came back i was really relieved and i went back to my life but i didn't go deep enough in that in in this feeling in that realization I I just you know I'm a very intellectual person it's a very I'm very much in my head and so I thought oh okay everything is solved now the school is back I can think about myself I can have my own time um but I didn't really try to heal that part and it came back in 2019 uh first i already had an agent i broke a bone <laughs> i broke my collarbone and i didn't listen so then agent covid and then um it started um i think in the beginning of 2021 i started to have some feelings that something was wrong with my body and um, it's after a healing, a group healing on intuition with you that I really um, took action. Your and intuition really began to yeah, and really you. went to see a doctor because really I knew I knew what it was. And I had the diagnosis of a breast cancer. So uh, it was already quite um, far advanced. Um, but it was curable still. And um, 
And so I was really shocked, of course. So I went through um, a lot of fear, a lot of fear of dying. And um, I realized that all this time um, I was telling the universe that I couldn't make it anymore. I said uh, things like, oh, I'm so tired, oh, I can't be, I'm so tired to be a mom, I can't do this anymore. And I mean, you should watch what you're, what you're saying, you should watch your uh, words and, and thoughts, because really, powerful, our words the universe was, was just answering, oh, okay, you're tired of this life, okay. And, and this, this was really about can I just share something here for anybody mm -hmm. that's listening to this because we're talking about agents yes. and agents is one of the teachings of light web that we are the universe loves us so much it's willing to send agents to us to help us back into alignment that is the crux of the teachings the agents come in three flavors the first flavor is your, the emotional branch your emotions are agents so I don't feel good um I feel down, I feel anxiety, I feel these are all agents. If we do a good job of ignoring them, which us women are amazing at, we can stuff them down, we can shop them out, we can numb them out. The universe starts to sell, send what we call the outer branch of agents, which are, of course, the button pushers of life, outside forces that make us, trigger us and kind of usually push our buttons that's the outer branch and then the final branch that the universe sends is agent illness and although this teaching is quite a hard teaching to sit with that illness could actually be from a universe that loves us so unconditionally it's willing the universe doesn't look at life through our perspective and through the human lens it looks at in life through its higher perspective of that this world is temporary and spirit is eternal and so that agent illness is loves us so much it's willing to take us back home um which is kind of a weird concept for us humans to kind of wrap our heads round but there you were you were literally saying I'm so tired I you know this is too much and so agent oh, illness sent a uh, universe <laughs> and sent, uh, an agent and a checkpoint all in one, you know, a checkpoint of like, is this really what you want? Or, um, you know, and so really, talk us it, through that, talk us through that realization of yes. like, holy so, crap, I've spoken this almost into being. The first thing when I had this diagnosis, of course, I was like, you know, navigating the shock of the news. But the first thing, and this is really amazing about this journey, is that I thought, okay, what is it teaching me? What's behind it? It's not just, you know, cancer, because everyone around me was like, oh, but why? You like you live such a healthy life. You you breastfed your children for a long time and nothing. And you did all the right things, and right? My mom, my mom, but we don't have it in the family. <laughs> yeah, you know they were looking for outside, and and within myself, I was like, mm -mm, I know it's an agent. I know it's something. It's it's here to teach me a very deep lesson. And I was, so I went on uh, looking for um, the answer. What is it teaching me? And I found many things and they were all about finding the joy for life, you know, finding, enjoying the life and being, um, um, so, well, being aware that I have a body. That I actually have a body, that I'm not just my mind, that I'm not just there. It's I need to be in my body as well and care mm. for it. And um, so there's a lot of self care, of self love, of um, gratitude for life and um, being in the present moment. And, and also, I found out. Um, 
it's about being grateful for my children as well and uh, being grateful, being more grateful for life in general, what I have. And um, and so I was super grateful. There had been a for conflict there with your well. children as well, because we, you know, this deep, deep, deep heartfelt desire of wanting those children. Yeah. And then the reality of loving those children but also as well it's tough it's hard yeah as a single mom and it's it's you know it's not in there there's no like like day off from motherhood in a way <laughs> yes I was like I, I was feeling I, I was feeling a lot of guilt around that too and um I was doing my best for them to to be to feel good and to be you know to take care of their emotions as well and um I was I was really <clears throat> I think I was really a good mom but I wanted more for myself that I couldn't really have or um afford or I couldn't really for example, I wanted to go on a weekend retreat and it was so complicated to organize. And um, and I just, you know, I just thought, OK, it's not it's not the season of my life and it will be better when they grow up, when they're older and I will be able to leave. And um, it's not. So I, I try to reminding myself, OK, it's not it's temporary. OK, it's temporary and um, they're growing up. It's temporary. and. So what during my treatments, I was really, I stopped working um, um, to take care of my own energy. Really, it was really teaching me to uh, take care of my energy and to rest when I needed. Um, and I was really, I, I got help. I got a lot of help around me, which uh, was a new thing too. Um, and allowing um, that in is huge, right? Yes. It's one thing yes. to have the help there, but it's a mm. totally different thing to allow it in. This was my first lesson, receiving, receiving the help and receiving the love, like receiving. Um, when I say receiving the love, it means receiving the help as well. Uh, receiving, and allowing that for yourself. Uh, receiving money to support me, receiving um, um the love and the attention of others and really yeah that was a big thing and then it was about my own uh self-love and um and my emotions because i understood thanks to one of my friends um uh, that i met through your group through your group i realized that um my emotions where um, I, I couldn't, I struggled feeling my emotions. Like really, they were they were telling stories between themselves, and it was the information was not coming uh, to my consciousness. Really, so I tend to ignore uh, my emotions and and intellectualize them. Um, so I I need to now. I'm learning to to really stop and feel and be a witness Listen for myself, them, yeah. be a witness so for, uh, for myself and my emotions. Um, so it was really, um, really a good, good teaching. And yeah, and then during my, at the end of my treatments, right at the end, when I was almost over, three days before actually I had COVID so <laughs> due COVID came and um and I was because I had chemotherapy uh it was very difficult for me to heal by myself so um I had to be hospitalized for a week and it, this was over Christmas New Year um last year and um and it really changed my energy a lot it was really weird it was really ungrounding I could spend days just 
doing not thinking anymore <laughs> i had a very busy mind usually i had and um i had a very weird experience when i got covid as well it felt like my brain was being upgraded that's the only thing that's the only way yeah. that i can describe it yes. um and there was an emptiness as well but it was a, it wasn't unpleasant it was actually very pleasant because <laughs> i have a busy mind too and it was that it was like a space had been created within my mind I went to the hospital with with nothing but my phone and my my earphones and um and I didn't even watch my I wasn't even watching my phone most of the time I was just watching the the the, the world <laughs> and and um yeah it 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 felt really weird and when I came back home and I remember you know when when you're in a hospital room you don't really see much of outside um, just through the window but when I went out I was not I, uh, I was not well enough to walk or but I had to be taken home um, in a um, sort of uh, taxi uh, ambulance taxi and and I was looking through the windows and outside and it was like it felt like a different world and I was so grateful you know I had the, the gratitude coming up <gasps> this is beautiful like I can see outside and all oh, the sky is so gorgeous and all the things I was not see I was not seeing and um and I cried of gratitude of being alive <laughs> and and I was laughing at myself for this too and um and then I came home and my home was empty uh because my children were with my mom and uh they stayed there for another couple of days and I was home alone and I had only the energy to cook for myself and that's it um and I was really spending time in bed again and and trying to to heal and trying to ground because really I felt so ungrounded that I felt out of my body and it was so weird when I was sleeping I felt I was completely out there and um and so my my goal was really to ground me back in that moment. And uh, I had, at some point, I had a gratitude moment. Incredible. It was, you know, I don't know if you know the work of um, Jody Spencer, and he's talking about the, the moment, the present moment. The, it's like an awakening it's a sort of it's sort of an awakening uh, when you're in the present moment, and and you can like it's as if you could see everything and and understand everything. It's it's amazing, and at that moment, I got this giant gratitude for life and my children and and my situation even even if it was not easy um i had this immense gratitude coming down on me and i didn't know where it came you from feel as well like that moment as well was like um mm -hmm. a surrender and an acceptance as well of yes. like this life that i have although mm -hmm. it might not be like i thought it would be what i've got is amazing yes yes it's amazing and um and in that moment, I found out that I was, that I had been still in maternal exhaustion. And even a cancer diagnosis um, wasn't enough to make me realize that I was still carrying this, this energy of exhaustion. And, um, and it's really in that moment that I found out later that it's the moment I healed. It's in that moment, it's in that present moment that I healed. Uh, so it was first my my intuition told me, and then I checked, um, I checked with my kinesiologist um, that yes, it was this moment um, I I healed, and I still I'm still have I still have some residue sometimes. So I'm I'm working on this. I'm working energetically on on the residue of this energy but it's really the moment that it was gone and um 
and yeah, I'm feeling very, very much different about my situation um, now. So after that, I still have had some illness, unfortunately. Um, I had some um, um, embolism following COVID. So it's uh, like blood clots in the lungs. And um, um, so <laughs> I, w- <laughs> I was like, come on, universe, you're trying to kill me again. <laughs> and and um and i said okay 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 i'm 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 loving life and i'm doing it okay and i could feel that it was really about um remember reminding me oh you're here to do something to serve you're here to and they were pushing me to to rebirth my business and do something with my with my gifts you know so that's when i started um when I started to work again or to think about working again and uh, taking it slowly, um, respecting my own energy, I, I started like being back in, in business. And that's when, that was during the Lightbringer um, uh, training as well. And um, so it really, it really helped me go back to what I'm supposed to do here (laughs) amazing oh my goodness what a journey what a journey you've been on one of the things I want to kind of rendezvous back to is with all these agents that you've had one of the things that I think has been really like that I've you know watched you and observed you as you've gone through all of this and you know (laughs) It's so easy when you're ill, and I know this from personal experience of having had chronic illness and and healed that from my body, but it's so easy when you're ill to fall into that victim mode of feeling like life is kicking your ass, that, you know, why me, all of these things. And one of the things watching you walk this journey, which what I can say from what I observed was with utter grace of total and utter grace and and I remember when you first told me that you know you'd had this cancer diagnosis and just very rapidly because that's how things move now with Lightweb is just going through all the different layers of the emotion so quickly and just thinking oh my goodness um but immediately obviously landing on this is an agent. One of the things that I see a lot of people do out in the outer world when they get a cancer diagnosis is they say things like, you know, like they treat that cancer like it's the enemy. You know, it's like something to be fought and it's something to be like eradicated and and all of these things. And, you know, one of the things that I observed from you was that you never, ever treated cancer. You treated it as an agent. Yeah. I didn't resonate with the, with the, um, no, I didn't resonate at all with the warrior um you know what we call when we call the women having cancer oh they are such warriors yeah you're fighting it and it's your enemy I I was like no I'm treating it with love I mean why would there's I there's another I- there's another little play on words there right with a mm-hmm. warrior because you've got a warrior with a weapon and then you've got someone sitting just at home worrying, right? Yes. That's a kind of, I always find that really funny with the the warrior. Like, you know, it is that energy of like, well, which one are you? The, the one with the weapon or the one in the corner worrying because, but it was so beautiful to watch your journey. I mean, it inspired me so much to see you heal from this and, the gentle approach in which you approached it and the respect and the reverence that you had for this teacher that was in your life. I tried to also to to not uh, call it mine. So I always try to make a difference, to to use the words um, the cancer or I had a diagnosis, but it was not my cancer I didn't want to own it so I'm I'm loving I'm loving the agent I'm treating it with respect I, I'm listening to what they have to say but 
I don't want to own it and I can release it. I love that. I don't need it in my life. I don't need it anymore. It was useful at that time, but it's not mine. You know, I don't want to, because I see people saying my, my, my. And they're claiming. Uh, I really, they're, oh, absolutely. Please, uh, it's not, not something I'd like to do. And this is the Be Magic mm. Insight. You know, Be Magic Insight too. Language is the first magic humans learn. Words are the gatekeepers of energy. And really, like, I love your take on that and your spin on that in the fact that, yeah, this is not this is not mine this is just an agent um just like a messenger you know when they come with a, a message or a telegram or something you know it's like it's a messenger don't um, want it back you know <laughs> i don't want it back i i i i had like i'm listening and i don't want to focus on it i want to focus on on life and on what it brings me yeah on the teachings not on the on the messenger Mm. and just and that messenger to uncover the deeper message of the maternal exhaustion which I think in a way for many people it it's an almost taboo subject right it's It's, like yeah we're supposed to be like the um, I don't know if you have that over in front, um, you know, the, the Duracell bunnies that go forever, yes, you know, got yeah. Duracell batteries in there. And I think mothers are seen as we're meant to be like Duracell bunnies that just keep going um, no matter what. And, you know, and so it is a kind of weird taboo subject to say, well, you know, that motherhood could exhaust us. And of course it does. It's, it's very taboo to, to, be a woman to be a mother and not liking being a mother you understand yeah like I'm thinking okay I, I'm um, I came across recently some uh, people on the on the internet say talking about the regret that they have that they were not meant for that so it's a little bit low consciousness so I didn't really engage in that but I understand that women with uh with a huge mental load um even though they wanted children they love their children they're doing everything for them but they're like okay maybe I wasn't meant maybe I wasn't someone to um to be maybe I wasn't meant to be a mother I don't like saying that because I think it's a lesson in life as well but um um yeah some mothers and I learned this through uh, a good friend too that some mothers are very um energized by their children by their children's presence so they are the mm. schoolers, you know and other mothers need time for themselves and they need to have um some some other um most of the time they have a passion or they're more uh into their head or they're more into um serving um I don't know how to explain that. I don't want to be I mean the the, the first category is not better is not think, better. No yeah, one is better me, but they're all spiritual. They can be all spiritual, but it's just a difference of yeah. personality, really. And we have to honor uh, both. So, um, but it's it's very taboo to not be in the first category of women who want. To I think we are conditioned to believe that our children will complete us. Yes, and then and as not, women, we exactly. think there's something wrong when yeah. it isn't the children that create that role in our lives of completing us, that actually completion might come from other sources, like Mm -hmm. the work that we do or other factors. And then of course, if you have children, then you think, well, what's wrong with me then? Because I'm looking at all these other women and they're saying their children's completing them. And I don't feel that way. Um, I know for me personally, my own journey, um, I absolutely, you know, I have um, three children and a stepdaughter as well. And and so four kids all together. And I adore my children, but I have always felt very strongly that I did not come out the mold that mothers 
are supposed to come out of. And, you know, the idea of being a stay-at-home mom was an extremely difficult concept for me and I battled with it. Um, and I actually find that I'm a much better parent when I also do my work yeah. and I've got my work and I've got that, that thing that really feeds my soul, then I find I'm a much better human period but I'm also a much better mother in the fact that um, I'm not in a way looking to these beautiful little humans that I've created to complete me you know whereas um, you know and then but it is a very taboo subject because but I know that when I took ownership of those feelings that I had and I admitted them so Skylar's teaching again there you know of either you own the story or the story owns you and when I owned that story and said you know what it's but I gave myself permission that it's okay for my children not to complete me I love them I adore them I, they are my I've literally created some of my favorite humans in the whole wide world but being a stay-at-home mom was not the be end and all of my universe um and you know and that's a difficult thing I think as a woman to openly admit that and to own that because I think as women we're conditioned to and I think especially in our generation as well that we have, I, I, I identify as Generation X. So for me, you know, it's we've got baby boomer parents and then, you know, and then we were meant to like do the 1950s housewife while having the very powerful 80s, 90s career woman moves at the same time, you know, and we were meant to do it all and have it all. Um, and I believe that we can have it all, but I, I just really, um, you know, it, it was quite conflicting, I think, you know, because that very 1950s, your children will complete you. And then as a woman, you find that that's not necessarily true. I find that that's a very taboo subject and one that is crowded in a lot of shame and a lot of guilt I know personally that I felt a lot of shame and guilt I felt like there was maybe something wrong with me as a woman um when I admitted that I'm a better human if I get to work and I get to have something that I can truly pour my energy in that is mine alone um that gives me more bandwidth and capacity for family life and it makes me a better parent. As soon as I was able to own that, it things just got easier, a lot, lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and it's it it puts less pressure on them too, on your children, as and well. on yourself as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a pressured thing because I just remember sitting thinking, "What's wrong with me? Why?" you know why I mean I I remember it was actually I can tell you the exact moment that I was really thinking these thoughts I was sitting on the couch my my two youngest children were qu still quite little they were both kind of maybe under three and I'm watching t and Teletubbies the Teletubbies are on the tv and I just remember thinking these Teletubbies are literally going to come through the screen and cart my brain off they're going to take my brain. They're like, I feel, <laughs> I felt brain dead. I was That's like, do. <laughs> it, it was. And, you know, and I had these, these beautiful little humans, you know, um, and, and yes, and, and all the milestones were exciting, you know, like the first words and taking their first steps and the potty training and all of that, you know, but that feeling that women describe of like, it's the be end and all of their world that feeling was missing for me and I was just like these Teletubbies are literally going to take my brain and it will never be seen again and I just remember just sitting there thinking what is wrong with me why why is this not the the epitome of happiness and I think that's what we are conditioned to believe and it wasn't until I was able to hold the energy and admit, I need something that's mine and mine alone in order to function better. Yeah. 
that was huge. I love that. And I can totally relate to this maternal exhaustion. I think, you know, and I think, but as women, we've also got to understand that that's part of the evolution of women. The 50s are over. Yeah. And the generations before us, and they, had, they kind of had no choice. Even, I'm sure there were some of them um, that were not enjoying this, this motherhood, uh, stay at home mom. Um, and I'm sure my mom and maybe the other uh, women in my lineage probably didn't enjoy it as much um, either. And they, they just didn't have choice because it was, it was the way it was, you know, if they, they when I was little, um, there were, there was school started at four years old and there was no daycare before that. So even I remember my mom was working and I was with her because she was working from home for the business, the family business, but she had no daycare. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I can understand like, we have to to stand up and say okay stop it, it stops with me it stops now now the next generations will be able to to say um to say okay I'm not okay with this I love I want to have children but I don't want to be 24 7 with them I don't want to to be a stay-at-home mom and um and I want to do something else for myself so without any guilt, uh, any shame, any um, any pressure from the society or um, other people, yeah. I love that. I love that vision. I think that is a a true vision for the world, you know. And I know that in me holding a little teeny piece of that vision, in that I became a more loving person when I was able to be in honesty with myself. Yeah. It's 11, 11 here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what a beautiful note to finish on. Thank you so much, Elena, for joining us today for this epic conversation. I feel like we've been all over Thank the houses, um, deep into a lot of the really juicy teachings of Lightweb and Lightbringer and Akashic Records. Tell people where they can find you on the internet. If you've listened to this interview, you've been inspired by Elena's journey, you want to go and check her out and you want to go and, um, and see what she does in the world then where can people find you on the interwebs? So I'm um, mainly on Facebook. So, um, so I use my, my personal profile on Facebook and I have a business page. Um, I have obviously a website, so elenateneriello.com. Um, and um, it's, so you have my services on, on my website and I'm opening a group right now so um you will probably be able to give the link um later but it's a group that i want to open um it's mostly for i actually open it to tell stories of healing so i want to tell my stories of healing through whether it's through past lives or um, present life, so I'm I'm willing to to write stories about um, my past lives and the lessons I got out of them, and um, and I'm I'd like I'd like to invite people as well to 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 tell about um, about their own stories uh, of healing. So I don't know where it will lead, but that's the idea I have about it right now and it's really about um it's, it's probably it's, it's it's i'm going to call it reclaiming wholeness uh healing journey so really about wholeness about becoming whole again and and yeah. uh, reclaiming all the lost parts of yourselves of yourself um that you lost along the way and that you want to bring back 
to yourself and be whole that. again. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joanna.